Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? Gonna go nuclear. We are going to describe the characteristics of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. As always, taking a moment to break it down. First thing we're gonna do is define what the heck radioactive decay is. Numero dos. We're gonna explain why an unstable nucleide will undergo radioactive decay. So what is radioactive decay and why are things going to do it? And then finally, numero three, we are gonna describe three different types of radioactive decay in terms of balanced nuclear equations. All right, to start us off, nuclear chemistry is very different from the type of chemistry that we've been doing throughout the entire year. In nuclear chemistry, our focus is on the nucleus of the atom instead of the electron cloud. Because of that special focus on the nucleus, we're gonna use the term nucleide, which is just an atom, but our focus is gonna be on the number of protons and neutrons that are in the nucleus of that atom. All right, now nucleides are represented in one of the two following ways. First, you've got just the name of the element followed by its mass number, or you've got the symbol with the mass number and the atomic number. So take a moment to jot those down and commit them to memory. This is what you're gonna see in nuclear chemistry. As an example, let's take a look at hydrogen. Here's a model of one isotope of hydrogen. Its atomic number is one because there's one proton, and its mass is one because there's only one subatomic particle in the nucleus, that one proton. Notice if I add a neutron to my nucleus, the mass changes, but my atomic number stays the same. Take a look at another example. Here, let's take a look at some atoms of carbon. This atom represents an atom of carbon-12. Notice the atomic number six refers to the six positive protons in the nucleus, and the mass number of 12 refers to the total number of protons and neutrons in that nucleus. Six protons, six neutrons. As you take a look, if I add another neutron to my nucleus, notice that this becomes an atom of carbon-13. Still carbon because I have six positive protons, but now I have seven neutral neutrons. Now, before we go any further, I always wondered why the nucleus doesn't fly apart. You've got all these positively charged protons packed really close together. Why doesn't that nucleus just fly apart? It turns out, without going too much in depth, that there's something that you should know as the strong nuclear force, which acts on subatomic particles that are extremely close together, like protons and neutrons. And this force overcomes the electrostatic repulsion between, between protons and holds that nucleus together. But it turns out that the strong force is only so strong. And you can't just put any combination of protons and neutrons together and expect to get a stable nucleus. The stability of the nucleus largely depends on the ratio of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And for smaller elements, that optimum ratio is one to one. As the elements become larger, the optimum ratio becomes closer to one proton for every 1.5 neutrons. And so the neutrons play an important role in, in helping to hold the nucleus together. Strong force! And again, for elements with atomic number less than 20, generally a one-to-one -one ratio of neutrons to protons is fairly stable. As you get more and more protons, however, you need a greater ratio of neutrons to protons to help hold that nucleus together. Now, if a nucleide is not stable, or we have an unstable nucleide, it's gonna undergo what's called radioactive decay in order to become more stable. So throughout this unit, as we refer to or talk about unstable nucleides, we're really talking about radioactive nucleides. So let's come back to our example of carbon-12. This is a stable nucleide. The ratio of protons and neutrons is one to one. I can add another neutron and still have a stable nucleide of carbon-13. However, as I continue to add neutrons, make an atom of carbon-14, notice that my nucleus becomes unstable. The ratio of protons to neutrons is off. And it's an unstable or radioactive nucleide like this that's, under, that's going to undergo what's called radioactive decay. Now, radioactive decay is just the spontaneous disintegration of a nucleus into a slightly lighter nucleus accompanied by the emission of particles, electromagnetic radiation, or both. And again, sort of the goal of radioactive decay is to create more stable nucleides. Now, our first type of radioactive decay that you wanna be comfortable with is what's called alpha decay. Now, in alpha decay, 
an alpha particle, which is two protons and two neutrons bound together, is emitted from the nucleus. Now, this type of decay is restricted almost entirely to very heavy nuclei. And alpha particles, as a type of radioactive decay, has relatively low penetrating power and can be stopped with essentially a sheet of paper. So as you take a look at your notes and on your screen, an example of alpha decay is shown to you here. We have a very large nucleus, very unstable, lots of protons, lots of neutrons, and your strong force only acts over very small distances. And so when you have a very large, unstable nucleus like this, in order to become more stable, it needs to shed some of those protons and neutrons to become smaller and more stable. In addition to a particulate representation, you're also provided with a sample equation that illustrates alpha decay. Notice that we start with a large atom of uranium-238, and it decays to thorium-234, and it shoots off an alpha particle. Notice that they use the symbol for helium because anything with two protons represents a nucleus of helium. Here's a quick animation to illustrate the different penetrating powers of the different types of radioactive decay. Right now we're focused on alpha decay, which we could stop with a sheet of paper. All right, here is a thrilling animation in which you can watch atoms undergo alpha decay. I've got a bucket of polonium here. I'm gonna add 10 atoms of polonium. Whoa! As you watch carefully here, you will see that the polonium decays by alpha emission into lead 207. So these little particles that you see coming flying out are your alpha particles. Get ready. Here we go. Ooh, another one decayed. Ooh, more decay. Oh, there goes an alpha particle. Oh, this is so exciting. A second type of radioactive decay is what's known as beta decay. Again, radioactive decay is going to occur so that a radioactive or unstable nucleide can become stable. And the reason why it's unstable or radioactive is because the ratio of protons to neutrons is off. And so in beta decay, we have a neutron that's converted to a proton and an electron, and the electron is emitted from the nucleus. That electron is known as a beta particle. This type of decay occurs when a nucleate has too many neutrons to be stable, and beta particles have an intermediate penetrating power. You can stop them with a sheet of aluminum foil or plastic. Again, here's a representation of beta decay in both a particulate representation and also in an equation format. Notice in the particulate representation that one of our neutrons becomes a proton and an electron. That electron, also known as a beta particle, is emitted from the nucleus. As you look at the equation, notice that with beta decay, the mass stays the same. But by converting a neutron to a proton, we do change the element that we're working with. Again, as you think about comparing beta decay to some of the other types of radioactive decay, it's sort of an intermediate when it comes to its penetrating power. It will penetrate more strongly than alpha particles, but less so than gamma radiation. I also have a thrilling animation to illustrate for you beta decay. This time I got a bucket O hydrogen three. I'm gonna throw 10 atoms onto my screen. Watch as they undergo beta decay. Boom. Boom! So notice this time when they decay, the mass stays the same. I convert one of my neutrons into a proton and an electron, and that electron, aka my beta particle, gets shot out from the nucleus. Boom! Which brings us to our third type of radioactive decay, also known as gamma decay. Here we have high energy electromagnetic waves that are emitted from the nucleus as it changes from an excited state to a ground state. So not a particle, but a high energy wave. This usually occurs immediately following other types of decay. And gamma radiation is very high penetrating radiation and requires thick sheets of lead or concrete to be significantly reduced. Boom. Our third type of radioactive decay, very penetrating, very powerful type of radioactive decay, need very thick sheets of lead or concrete to even begin to deter its penetrating power. All right, and that does it for this video. Have a fantastic day. You can do it, boo! Which one, boo!